How Foolish Really Is Foolish Wives? Find out today on Really Old Movies. Welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today I'll be discussing the Eric von Stroheim classic, Foolish Wives, from 1922. Some essential movie details. This film originally clocked in around 10 hours long, but due to studio interference, Eric von Stroheim had to trim the film down to three hours. Now, over the years, as it's been 100 years ago, uh, this three-hour version no longer exists. What we do have is it about a two and a half hour version of the film from Kino Lorber, which uses various elements for the film negative. So like uh, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter, just multiple sources to create one cohesive version. And now the basic plot, a rich man played by Eric von Stroheim, he's also the director, he seduces rich women to steal all their money from them. One of these women works as his maiden, and she gets fed up with his antics and burns a building down with him inside of it. He saves himself, and the public finds out that he's truly a coward. The whole film, he's trying to build himself up as this socialite, as this great person, and everyone realizes how terrible he really is. So he tries seducing another woman, but she, he's shot to death by her father, and his body is thrown into the sewer, and that's where the film ends. So, the reason why I picked this film is it's on my watch list, and it's in the, the book 1001 Movies to See Before You Die. Now, I am not too familiar with von Stroheim's work. All I know is that he's very ambitious. He tries to do these insanely big projects. He has insane attention to detail. But I also know the studio interferes with a good chunk of his movies. So, before I get into the review, just know that this is not his original vision. This is what the studio ended up doing with his work. And we may never know how it truly was supposed to be. Because um, for the most part, it's it's gone. And you may know him from uh, Sunset Boulevard. He plays Max, who's uh, um, Gloria Swanson's butler. I don't remember her character's name. But uh, you may know him from that. He, he, like his character, was a big prolific director in the 20s and 30s. But once sound really came along, his, uh, his influence on film really sunk and really got lower. And he went to obscurity, hence why he was a cameo in that film. You know, it's very interesting how that happened. So with all that set up, let's get into my review of the film itself so the plot i gave it a one out of five i just did not like it i thought the seducing part takes up a huge portion of the film now because i know it's about 10 hours long i'm sure there are other elements that are setting up all the different characters all the different things going on around them but you don't have hardly any of that in this you just see all the scenes with him and women you know, it just abruptly starts with him scheming people. We don't really get any setup to any of the scenes. It's just events happen throughout the movie. There's no real clear storyline. There's no linear plot to really follow along. So it's really hard to get into. And to be honest, I had a hard time paying attention and being interested. It's just not that interesting of a plot. And like I this really could have been due to the excessive cuts. I mean, what we have is just a, b <laughs> a bumbling mess that just moves along very, uh, very juxtaposed and very strangely. So yeah, I, I gave it a one out of five. I was just not a fan of it. In regards to acting, I gave it two out of five. It was, eh, it was okay, not great. I thought Von Stroheim, he's probably the highlight of the film. He's probably the best actor of all of them. and uh, But even he can't save this jumbled mess. Now, I love his costume. You know, the monocle. It's very, very bourgeoisie and very elitist. I, I like it, but it, everyone else is really kind of forgettable. 
you know, you don't have any characters you're trying to root for or trying to like. You have characters you feel bad for, but we don't really have a reason to feel bad for them. And I think that that may be due to the acting. Now, some of you may say, well, it's a different time and, you know, different acting styles. I guess, but, you know, Metropolis, you you were rooting for the characters in that movie. You felt bad for the characters. You wanted them to succeed. And that only came out five years after this. Technically three if we count when it started being made. So not much time between this and Metropolis. So there really isn't an excuse. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's all I have to say about acting. It was just okay, not great. Now directing wise, again, I will preface this with this may be due to the cuts. I don't know if it's just due to him. But I also blame him for some parts. I gave it a 1 out of 5. I gave directing 1 out of 5. Uh, what were they thinking with cutting out so much of the story? There's no real cohesive plot. And a lot of people blame the editors for it. But I kind of blame Von Stroheim as well because he couldn't come up with a story that could be told in two hours or less. You know, if you have such a big over, over, uh, over pumped up plot that can't be summed up in a couple sentences or in a couple scenes, it's not a very good story. <laughs> I think he could have done better. I really think, I don't really blame the studio for wanting to trim it down to two hours. I mean, let's face it, 10 hours is a hard sell. <laughs> You know, movie studios also want to make a return on their investment. It's not just a place for artists to come along. They also need to make money. And I guarantee this movie would have not made any money at all if it were 10 hours long. Because let's face it, who wants to watch a 10-hour film? Now, I, I wish he summed it up into two hours because I have no idea what's going on half the time. And I really blame him for it. I do. So, yeah, one out of five. In regards to cinematography and special effects, this is probably the highest highlight of the whole film. I gave it a three out of five. It was great. I think Von Stroheim really knows how to set up scenes. He's really good at angles, different shots, and all of that. And his attention to detail, you know, the costumes were all authentic. Even the chandeliers, all of that was authentic. He has a really good attention to detail he's a really good set decorator but when it comes to everything else i don't think they're his strong suit i think his strong suit is here with cinematography and there wasn't really any special effects the title cards were kind of interesting i liked the typography used but nothing special really but yeah that's the cinematography like i said highlight of the film probably the best part and uh yeah i, I think he's a good photographer if we're going to use that all right in regards to music i gave it a one out of five um it was okay but it was the same couple of notes over and over and over and over again i got really tired of it it's not that good it's not that interesting i got sick of it <laughs> and again people will say oh that's just typical of the 1920s Okay, but again, I go back to Metropolis. Metropolis had a, an amazing score, one of the best I've ever heard. Each scene had a kind of a unique score and unique thing. In this, there's nothing different with each scene. Each scene has the exact same music over and over. Now, I don't know if it's the original sheet music. I think it is. Um, it's not very good, and it's a really, really disappointing. And so would I recommend this film? To be honest, no. I wanted to like it. I really did. And hopefully someday we'll get the full version. They'll have the full story and it actually makes sense. But the current cut is just absolutely awful. It is such a bore to get through. It's dreadful to watch. It's a terrible movie. <laughs> I really don't know why this is one of the thousand and one to see before I die. It, it's not that good. It kind of reminds me of the time I watched uh, Dr. Mabuse about a year or two ago. And uh, that movie is four hours long, but it's divided into two parts. And uh, I don't know. I think for the most part, most movies made back in the 20s and 30s, 
I think should have been trimmed down <laughs> to an hour and a half or s- split into two movies. I think this would have been okay in two movies, but still no cohesive story to follow along. So I don't know if that would have made it better. Because of this, it makes me a little hesitant to watch Greed by Eric von Stroheim because it's the same deal, a 10-hour movie trimmed down to two hours. So I don't know if I'll be watching that anytime soon, maybe in a year or two. (laughs) Kind of give some time to watch other movies from the 20s, maybe uh, develop, I guess, a taste to these movies. Maybe this is typical of these movies. I don't know. You know, maybe Metropolis was really far ahead of its time. I haven't seen too many 1920s movies. I've seen maybe, oh, 20 or 30. So I think I still need to watch a couple more to really understand. But yeah, I can't recommend this movie. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, those are my thoughts and feelings on um, Foolish Wise from 1922. It's it's foolish to watch. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure to subscribe to our Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where I discuss details about the week's particular film. New podcast episodes are released Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and now Amazon Music. All right, well, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Skolan. Take care.